I hope everybody we're back and you won't believe it, but I've only got my second favourite cousin in. <laughs> second. Well, oh do you know goodness. what? Um, I've got Jo in. She's my cousin. Um, she's absolutely amazing. I've grew up with her. I mean, obviously I've grew up with her, but I mean, like, grew up with her properly. Properly grew up with her. Like, we were always around each other. Um, she's a little bit older than me, so it was kind of like a big sister, I think, really. But today, I'm going to show you her fingers and we're going to transform them. <laughs> You'll see why. <laughs> yeah, when I say, do you know what? When I say my second favourite cousin, that's only because I love Spencer, my brother, so much. But I don't, he, don't hear off him nothing. He's like, do you know what I mean? He's a ghost, might as well be. Um, yeah, I, I, I just, I do. Joe knows she's my favourite, really. But we can't let Spencer know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Spencer doesn't watch the channel. No, I'm sure he better not do anyway. Um, so. I mean, Jo's always had nice long nail beds and that's what I've always loved. She's got a substantial nail and that's what I like to work on. Um, so as much as I'm going to show you the issues that Jo has with her, with her fingernails, she has, got, she has got nice fingers and nice hands, but they, they are a little bit different when we turn them to the side. And these are things that you'll come across in the salon. You probably think, well, why, why doesn't this sculpting form fit? Or why won't this tip go on? What What is wrong? What What's going on? And it could be that you think, well, they look fine. You know, they, they, they're nice. They, they, why? What's going on? But then if we look at the side view, and let me put a black glove on just so you can see the contrast. And, you'll, and we'll get a metal file as well. So we've got something straight to... We'll actually use a centre board. So if we look at these two fingers here. So, and I want you to look at the shape at the top. So as we come straight out of this side here. Can you see? It's clubbed. And it's not like a, a true clubbed finger because some clubbed fingers are very wide, very, you know, slightly inflamed around the fingers and the hypernychium ends about here. So they really club over. Is that like, like Megan, uh, Megan Fox's toe thumb? Well, she's definitely got the toe thumb going on. I want you to look at things like this because they come straight out the side wall, but then because they come straight and they're very high here, when this nail grows, so when Joe's nail grows, it falls off the end of the nail and follows this shape here. So can you see how sloped this is? So her nail would actually grow at a right hook. Let me tell you, like, proper Captain Hook style. Um, and so will this one. This one a little bit more. Now, as we come to these ones, nowhere near as bad. Look at that. Just like a normal nail. Ooh, yeah, I've got some. some like you can't talk, you know, Jim. Those, those nice. kind of small nails, don't they? They have what? Some people kind of... Like those. Oh, God, yeah. There, there are people that like that old... Clawed nail. Mm, I've seen them. Yeah. I've went, why have you done that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a fan, if I'm honest. I think things should come straight out the side walls, be nice and sleek and streamlined mm. and not. Because imagine, Joe, right, this grew, grew like that right down there. Would that hinder you? <laughs> Drives me insane. I constantly file when I when I grow it long. I constantly file it so that it brings it back up to shape. I have yeah. to file one side off more than the other. And does that then make you you have to have um, your nail shape to be like an almond shape? Yeah. Yeah, because you're kind of filing the side walls yeah. off, which forces the nail to be an almond shape. So if you had square nails, it would go yeah. like a yeah. When I when yeah. I do square them off, it doesn't grow well. Yeah. And then the other issue is 
and um, these are just issues that you'll come across in the salon and might struggle to know what to do with them. So we've got um, we've got pitting on this nail, not on that thumb though. Not so bad, no. Not so what bad. What is it that causes this? Because my wife Haley's got this on her thumbs. So what is it that? Have you not not done that? No. No. Hers no. just grow up just like that as well. You've never mm -hmm. picked at it. I probably have, but. It's always been like that, so probably that's why I picked at it. Ah, you feel like that? Okay, mm. so, so my understanding of the anatomy of the nail, I can. I'm not a doctor. Disclaimer. Um, I can only think with my expertise that that is trauma. So trauma to right underneath it is the matrix. And you've got a very large half moon, Luna, yeah. yeah? So if we look, can we just get that? Can you see? Mm. So we're very, the Luna's very exposed, yeah? Now all these cells under here are very sort of, they're like newborn babies. They are freshly born and starting to keratinize and then they, when the further along they go, they get harder and harder, yeah? And it kind of works in layers from the from the nail bed as well, yeah? So, you're more, when your lunar is more exposed, you're more exposed to having damage to your nails. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. So as much as, I think it looks quite nice when you can see mm. your lunars, it looks nice. Even in nail competitions, what we do is, um, a lot of competitions you have to create a lunar. So it's it's nice when somebody does have the perfect kind of lunar because you've got something to follow and you've got, you can put product on there. Um, I'd say Joe's are a little bit too long for a competition. So if I use Joe as a model, I'd have to try and sort of reduce that down a bit and cover it and put like a soft white here and then a cover pink there. So if we look at all your nails, you can see your lunars. So these are perfect. That's the kind of size lunar that's perfect for competitions. Yeah. And the reason you do it in competitions is because it looks beautiful and it's, you know, glass does looking very nice. Um, it's aesthetically pleasing. And it's another challenge to create that soft white and mimic that see when you look at mine you can't you can see them a bit but not a lot just have a look at mine i literally don't have any at all see i can see a thumb one but what about your other side oh, yeah I mean, fingernails no yeah i know nothing at all you have to really but you push this back here there you ah! <laughs> not funny <laughs> there you are but it's only they're very little, isn't it? Yeah, very yeah. little. Auntie Lynn used to go on about them when she used to do my nails when I was young. Yeah, what did she used to say? I can't, something to do with white spots in them and things like that, but she used to say I've got massive moons on my nails. Yeah, I've got mm. big moons, yeah. What? What is the... Why do they exist? What is it? They're a different colour because they aren't fully keratinised, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. So it's just the growth outwards. It's just how it yeah. grows, yeah. So, because it's more exposed, mm -hmm. you can get more damage. Oh. Yeah? Because, yes, you can trap your finger. I mean, Joe's had horses all her life. And, um, you know, I've got them now, have you? Though, don't yeah. We? Yeah, she's still break bones on them. Though. Yeah. She did go for a ride a few months ago and uh, she was black and blue. Um, because I think for his first horse ride in less than that. Is he? Oh, that's cute. He's so excited. Yeah, so you came off that horse, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, that finger's still not straight. Yeah, so let's mm. so we'll look at that as well. We've got broken fingers. So obviously this finger slightly comes this way. So see if we made a really long extension, it kind of exaggerates this bit of a breakage here. Now, when we're doing a consultation for a client, this is like a contraindication, but it will not stop us doing this, doing the service. So don't think, oh God, she's got some disease, I can't do the service, and she needs to go to the doctor. Um, yes, they could go to the doctor, and the doctor will probably tell them the same thing, but it will give them some confidence, but it doesn't mean you don't, you don't have to stop the service. You can still put a nail extension onto this. So, 
We're going to address these issues today and we're going to make them look oh, beautiful. Look, excited. I have a look there, excited. Right, so I've just wiped over with the cleanup solution and what we're going to do is we're going to put the sculpting forms on. Now, this is where things become problematic. Even putting a tip on. So if you put a tip on, imagine that tip's going to slope down, isn't it? So the best way to counteract any kind of clubbing on a nail is to use a sculpting foam. Right, so our sculpting foams, they have aluminium inside and they've also got little wings cut out. So if we, if we wanted to lie that flat, like that, and then close, it kind of fits all right, doesn't it? But I want to show you this. So let me just close this as it is with the... When I say flat, I mean it's flat at the back. And then we thought, oh yeah, look at that, that's fine. I'm going to tell you the issues you'll have with that. So can you see how it's anchoring down? If you were doing an almond nail, you'd get away with it, but it would be very flat. So if we were going to come straight out the side wall, we could do an almond nail, or even a stiletto nail if we wanted to. But it'd be quite flat here. See how flat this part is? See how flat it looks here? Yeah? And that's because these are sat on the skin as well. And it's the angle of this form. So if we look at this now, I've just cut a little smidge off here. And can you see how that's sitting tighter mm -hmm. on this side? Yeah, so that's better. You could do the same with this side and it'll fit tighter and you'd get a more curved, beautiful, structured almond or stiletto. Not everybody wants an almond or stiletto though. So I'm going to show you how we would do a square or a modern almond. So we're going to open the back. So before we laid the back flat, open the back. And this is what you'll see. We're going to make contact, but we need to raise the form. And as soon as we raise the form, we make a gap here. So we need to cut another teeny, 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 teeny. <laughs> and breathe. Gloves are off. <laughs> Gloves are off. Firstly means business. Right, so we open this, we lift up. Can you see? I want to place it on just so you can really, 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 really see. So see how we've opened the back on this one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not too bad, actually. It's not too bad. Now, side view. Let's go back to this side view. Can you see the difference we've made? We have raised the form up, which means we can still come straight out of the side wall. Yeah? And we can have a side wall. Now, we've counteracted this, and we still have a straight side wall. We can create a square nail. My question was going to be, though... Go on. Okay, so... You, you straighten that up. Now, jaw goes away. If her nails grow fairly quick, obviously, as her nails grow, it's going to dip down, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. Correct. That's why we need Joe back in so we can show you what happens <laughs> because there's a way to correct that as well. Ah. Yeah, which is pretty cool. I, I, I want to do that video so bad. <laughs> But initially, we want to correct it from the get-go, yeah? So we've got straight out. So this is if you're doing a square or if you're doing a, a modern almond, because a modern almond comes straight out the side and then it kicks up a little bit, a soft little, a little bit like a pipe, but not as, but it's narrower than a pipe. And I mean the pipe nail shape, not an actual pipe. Yeah. And then we'll have product coming out of the cuticle. It'll come up like that. Oh, it's just going to look beautiful. Yeah? 
One thing you may run into, it actually does fit quite nice. There is a possibility that you will need to take some scissors and release a bit of pressure if this is on the finger. It all depends on the size of the person's finger. Um, little little fingers you don't really doesn't really interfere with. Um, the bigger the finger, everybody's got different size fingers. But that will allow you to get a little bit tighter and you want to get as close and tight as you can to that free edge here, if that makes sense. Just gonna kick this off. So will you still be able to do your baking with these nails? We'll see. Well, you need to. Well, I'll, you know, I'll still be able to bake. I might as well be able to decorate anything or, or sculpt, who knows? They will like, oh. use them as sculpting tools. Well, you should never use your nails as tools, you know, no. unless you're baking. Of course. Right, so all I've done with this one, again, is just nip the sides a little bit just to relieve a bit of pressure so it doesn't adjust the curvature and the angle of the sculpting form. So we're going to whack the other ones on now as well. These will be a lot easier and so will this one. Right, so we're going to use Jalica today. So I'm going to use Cover Blush and got the Acid Primer. I haven't done the thumb yet because I want to go into detail with that and... Also, I don't really put the thumb on till last because your client will definitely knock that. I will definitely knock anything that you put on. Yeah. It's just because the thumb sits at the side, you know what I mean? I mean, it'd be weird if it didn't mm. sit at the side. Yeah. You know, look a bit strange, that, wouldn't yeah. it? Now, obviously, you could do a whole design on this. But well, because this video is quite in depth, I am going to just do this cover pink, blush pink. So we've made contact with the natural nail. This is the first thing you want to do. And you can kind of build a bridge between the form and the natural nail. And then with this modern almond shape, I'm just going to drag out now. So I'm patting, but I'm slightly pulling the product towards myself, yeah? So we're going to have a bit of an angle here. It doesn't need to be a sharp angle. Even if it's a sharp angle while you're putting it on, that is fine because you can soften that with your file. But I mean, if you can get it as close to the finished result with your brush, then you're gonna reduce down your filing time. So second bead. Straight onto the nail. I'm not going to worry about this cuticle area yet. I'm going to start building structure. So as I pat it, as there's a very slight movement pulling the product towards the very tip. Next bead, smaller bead towards the cuticle area. Tipping the finger down so we're not going to flood. I'm just going to rehydrate this and I'm going to pull that part over. So we've got an apex here. Sliding out, just going to double check. I just want a tiny bit Gonna let that set up a little bit, then I will pinch it. But I'm, while that's setting up a little bit, I'm gonna move to this one and I'm gonna do that bridge layer. This bridge layer is really important when you have got a raised platform. So you've got this raised form. It's really important to get this part done first because you are connecting 
the form and the natural nail together. Get the sides nice and straight. Right, pinching tool. I am going to put a glove on because I'm going to be touching acrylic and it's not set. You know, it's not cured properly, so I don't want to get any reactions. And I'm just going to pinch that in a little bit more so it's like tapered in. Back to this one, we're going to repeat exactly the same thing. So with this bead, we are building structure. Rehydrate. That'll help you slide product down. view for your apex. I had a dream I got went through a speed camera and I got flashed in my Mustang. Um, that's not a dream, that's a premonition, darling. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to do that on the way here, to be honest. Did you? I got whiplash when you braked. <laughs> Let's have a look at this. Can we get a pinching tool on? We can get a pinching tool on, right. So I'm going to just repeat this as I go, doing one by one. And by doing them one by one, I have the time to pinch and work at the same time. And if I did this sort of bridge layer on all of them first, then when I come to do my next two beads, I won't be able to pinch because it'll be set. So you can see why I'm doing each nail at a time. A few moments later. Right, so we're going to do this thumb. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk through this thumb. So we've already um, wiped over it, but I do need to prep it. So I've already prepped the cuticle area, but I want to prep the surface of the natural nail. So we can see we have a little bit of blue food colouring on the nail because, you know, the Sorry. baking. Mm -hmm. The baking and, yeah. But when we go over this now, we should get rid of that. Okay, so we're going to use the mandrel bit with the Swarovski end, and we're going to use the ceramic sanding bands, which are this one. This packs in fine. I'm going to put my electric file on three, and we're going to skip over the nail. Not a lot of pressure. Down the side, you don't want to miss any bit. Now, let's just have a quick look at this. In there is a ditch that we haven't touched with the electric file. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna tickle into that ditch. Do not start rocking this backwards and forwards and start thinning the nail out too much because then yes it might be smooth but then you've thinned the nail and you get all this banding so we, you just lightly go over and make sure that you kind of tickle into those areas that are ditched it's not about smoothing it out the product is going to do that the acrylic will do it so don't try and think you've got to make that perfect. Just going to make it thin. And to be fair, I know it is quite a thick nail. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. It's a good strong one, that one is. Mm. It's a good crow. It's some chewy. Good crow. Oh, definitely a good crow. Good crow. It's just and a bit fat to get up there, really. 
Uh, yeah, I'd rather beg. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Maybe not. A, maybe not that good for crowing. Let me just take this length down. So when you're sculpting, you want to take the length down, but just leave the tiniest amount. Don't worry if there is no free edge. That is fine too. But I just want the tiniest amount. Like that. So we've got something to put up to. We have an edge to put the form up to. So again, we are going to open the back of the form because we want to raise it because of the shape that we're doing. We're not counteracting it quite as much as we did with the others, but there is a little bit of a hump. So we do want to make sure we come high enough with the form. Fabulous. So let me just double check this. So we're nice and straight, nice and tight up against the natural nail. The form is no wider than the nail itself. That's always important as well. The, the way you do that is by just trimming these edges to allow for this skin here. And that's it. We can prime and do exactly the same as we did. Prime it. We're going to do the same as we've done on those. We're going to build the bridge. And then as soon as we put product on, it's just going to smooth out that imperfection. Definitely trauma because can you see the little spots of blood? Let's get filing. I'm gonna use my, I was gonna say distractor. It's not That's called a distractor. Yeah. It's called an extractor. Let me set up my file. So I've got my extractor or my distract, distractor on. Uh, I've got a 150 grit file. Joe's dropping grapes as she eats them. Fired it straight at me. <laughs> you nearly fired it straight at me. I'm not a target. Get those sides done first. So this is my normal filing routine. Sides first, get them nice and straight. From that, you'll see everything start to come together. And then this slopes like that. Yeah, so it's not a hard line. We're not doing an edge nail. I'm doing a modern almond which I do absolutely love. Then I'm going to come round the cuticle area. Mm. 
and then you'll see I'm going to go up the sides on both sides first of all I'm not coming over the middle or worrying about the apex at this point so can you see where I've touched and where I haven't okay cool now I'm going to come flat and straight down the barrel see if any thickness needs coming off the tip And then I can just soften that apex a little bit. Now, if you do this with every nail, you should get a uniform finish. Don't know if it's a fleece uniform or an army uniform. <laughs> Nurses Fire. uniform. Fire. Firemen. Yeah, Firemen uniform. <laughs> Oh, do you know what I haven't said for a while? Round the perimeter. What? Round the perimeter. The perimeter. The perimeter. I used to say that a lot, around the perimeter. <laughs> round the outside. <laughs> oh, round the outside. Right. Shake that free edge. Good. Then on this file I've got set up, then this is the metal reusable centre board. I put a 180 grit and a buffer. Just going to use the buffer. I've got that 180 grit there in case I need to be a little bit softer. But I didn't on that one. And we're going to repeat this process on the other nails. One eternity later. So we've buffed. We're all dusted off. I'm going to wipe over it with the cleanup solution. That's just going to get rid of any of those little bits of dust. Do you know, like, if you're sanding down a skating board or sometimes you've got to sand a wall mm -hmm. and then you've got to paint it? You've yeah. got to get the dust off first, yeah. haven't you? Else it just goes yeah, all... Yeah, if you don't, it's, yeah, it's messy. Yeah. I've blew that lesson the old way. So there we are. So we're going to leave them like that because in another video we are going to do a design on them. They are a lovely platform, but I love them. And do you know what? What a transformation. If we look at the, look at the side views, we can see that we don't have, we no longer have those sort of um, clubbed nails. We have elegant nails with gorgeous structure, nice straight side walls, lovely apex, everything looks beautiful. I love them. Do you love them? I do, I love them. They're absolutely stunning. I love the shape. Shape's and the length. so pretty, isn't it? Yeah. It's elegant. It's, it's elegant. It's beautiful. And the colour's gorgeous. Yeah. So there we are, guys. That's how to, um, yeah, make ugly nails look pretty. <laughs> 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 I'm only joking. You've got gorgeous nail beds. You've always had gorgeous nail beds. Yeah, yeah just a shame about the rest of it. Yeah, you should see the other hand. Mm. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram and all the other socials. Uh, everything I've used today will be listed below, as always, with discount codes and everything. Um, yeah, keep watching, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. ta -da! Cat drive a car. Well, they haven't got those buttons.